Live. Hello, entrepreneurs. This is Joe DeChara coming to you live from downtown. Uh, where am I today? Levittown, Long Island, New York, uh, for another amazing podcast, interview, Facebook Live, whatever you want to call it. it it's all uh, great content, information, food for thought. Uh, and today I have a good friend of mine. I told him he is one of my favorite, actually one of my favorite entrepreneurs because we, we have known each other for, for quite some time now. Uh, and, and we are going to talk about some really interesting stuff about, you know, stuff that I've been learning over the last three years, uh, working to, to scale a business and, and when I, I thought about, you know, who could I uh, talk to about this one issue right away? Jeff Wolf came, came to mind. Hello, Jeff. How are you? I am doing good, Joe. Thank you so much for inviting me onto your show because you're one of my favorite podcast hosts and and, uh, and a good friend. We, we've gotten to be friends over the years, talking business and learning stuff and seeing each other at events. And, and I really appreciate this. Yeah, and I actually missed some of those events. So hopefully, uh, well, we'll be we'll be connecting on. Uh, we'll talk about it after. Uh, but one uh, one house cleaning thing or whatever. I, I I when I remember this, I'm happy. So if you're watching live, give us a hashtag live. If you're watching the replay, give us a hashtag replay. And there's a really good reason for that. Uh, it makes me feel good that people are actually uh, responding. That's the most important thing. But also, if you wanna be part of the conversation, part of the thread, if you wanna ask Jeff uh, questions about his area of expertise, uh, it, you know, the, the magic of social media keeps us connected. So it does become a, a pretty powerful uh, tool. So the way it works is if you post a question, if you're watching the, the replay, you could still uh, post a question and, and, and I'll get it. I'll pass it on to Jeff. Uh, mm -hmm. in fact, I think Jeff might get it too, but you know, all I know is it. it well, I can works. see, I can also see the comments. So you know, yeah. Joe, you are, you are so cutting edge because this is really 21st century television. This is live and interactive. It's, right back in the day, we had live TV, but now in the 21st century, streaming streaming live like this, like you're doing, this is live and interactive 21st century television. It's everything I learned from when I watched uh, 2001, A Space Oddity. If you think I'm sorry, Joe, I can't let you do that. Oh, and Star Trek, <laughs> and Star Trek, you know. But uh, yeah, it's it's amazing, you know. As entrepreneurs, you know, we got a lot of things to talk about. I, I like to try to keep these focused because uh, you know people's attention spans now are, are I think it's less than a fish. That that's what I heard. Yeah. I'm sorry, Joe. What were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Okay, so exactly. right now I'm looking for where to. Um, while you're watching this, do the same thing I'm doing. I'm looking for where I can find what you're broadcasting right now so I can share that out and we can expand our reach and get more people involved in the conversation. Yeah, we're actually, so this is StreamYard and, you know, StreamYard, we're in actually five, one, two, three, five different, we're streaming in five different places now, three Facebook groups, uh, LinkedIn, nice. and YouTube. So, well, yeah. Gonna... It is I'm going to find you on LinkedIn and share it out to my LinkedIn community. Okay, cool. Great. So that's uh, why, pardon me while I'm looking off camera here. That's that's why. Yeah, so just a, just a little background on how Jeff and I met. You know, I went to school with, with the uh, gentleman, Craig Doeswalt. He uh, learned about, you know, uh, becoming a speaker, basically a paid speaker. Mm -hmm. He put together a mastermind group. Uh Craig traveled with some really big rock bands. One of them is a band called, uh, what was it, Jeff? Guns N' Roses? What is it? Yeah, some little local band here from Hollywood, I think. Uh, and then a, Guns N' Roses or that that Air other Supply. group. What was it? Uh, yeah, Air Supply. You know, and it's, it's like big, about, really big tours. Holy cow. You, you know, how do you go from Air Supply to Guns N' Roses? I mean, that that's like, that had to be a shock. But anyway, uh, so Craig put together this... Uh, 
amazing mastermind for years we were meeting i don't know what was it like four times a, a year Jack? yeah oh, well he had two big events every year uh and we'd get you know five to seven hundred people there they, they were really they, they were rock star events so that's where i met a bunch of my my mentors you know john limbacher susan shepherd larry broughton uh jeff and you know the the list is long uh and the reason why i bring this up folks is because one of the the simplest principles that i have learned that costs virtually nothing is the mastermind principle okay mm -hmm. and when craig was doing a mastermind you know i said he doesn't know anything about this i got to go out there and help him so, <laughs> So I go out to California. I wound up for 10 years. I was going back and forth. And I met uh, Jeff was one of the people that, that I met. And he didn't have the business that he has today, uh, which was so the, if you don't know what a mastermind is, it's when a whole bunch of people, it could actually be two people, just get together with a common goal. And, and they do things like they create something called a hot seat. So Jeff went on a hot seat in one of these uh mastermind meetings and jeff you want to explain what a hot seat is uh, a hot seat is when a bunch of really mean people ask you hard questions about your business and then just hammer you over your mindset and your actions that you thought made sense and, and i say that tongue-in-cheek really the hot seat is about you take a group like you're like you're describing a mastermind. You have the the leading authority that's that's running the mastermind, which is why everybody came together because of that person's knowledge and experience. And you get to sit in front of the group there and say, "Look, here's my here's a business issue I'm working on, or here's a new program I'm launching." Uh, you know, and pitch that to the group, the mastermind, if you will, for feedback. You get a lot of a lot of pointed questions, which is great. And then the person leading it will also share their knowledge from from what's worked for them, what they've seen work in other businesses. And it's just it, it's amazing. It's like an MBA in 15 minutes. It, 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 it it's it's sort of like, you know, you see and literally we've seen the, the birth of businesses. Mm -hmm. That's how Adventure CEO started was in a hot seat like that. Right. So I was that, I was. Talk, I was talking through a business issue and everybody's asking clarifying questions. The person leading that. If it's okay to name drop, like they, they lead you, you know, down a path, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's sort of like problem solving, and you usually come up with yep. something. And the truth is, you always come up with something that not not one person in that group could have come up with themselves. Yes, and they're so good. At, there's this thing over here in my blind spot that I can't see, but the three people sitting over here from different industries are going, "Hey, wait a minute! Here's what we're seeing." And it's like, oh my god, you know, it's like no matter I how never, yeah i never looked good you that. are you get 15 high performers in a room they can take it a couple levels up if yes. you're willing to take if you're willing to listen yeah. and then apply what they're yeah. recommending and sometimes those people can can get ideas that mm -hmm. just from the price so it's a powerful process so yeah. now you, you, you experience that too right you know you, you'll learn oh, so much just from watching the match the many the hot seat many times but what what's amazing to me is your particular <coughs> experience where you went into you now how long was the hot seat five or ten minutes uh, i think it was 20 minutes at that particular oh wow. <laughs> so we had a little bit of time we had a little bit of time With okay. 15 minutes maybe 20 at the most so larry broughton is a mutual friend of ours he was running the the group and so each person has like you know a, a set set amount of time to ask questions to give feedback so what happened with jeff was he went into this this mastermind this hot seat uh put some information out there and he wound up with the business that he has today it what is so it's mm -hmm. adventure ceo right yes adventure ceo and I sat down in the hot seat with one business and stood up with a completely different business. We had the name, we had um, the uh, Larry's executive assistant, who was just an amazing businesswoman in her own right. Had the you know bought the you the the domain name for me and handed me that off. Go here, go this, and you know, we'll just, we'll handle the 
transferring money later. I had the, uh, someone else that was in the in the mastermind group had some graphic design chops. So they sketched out a couple logo options, which you can still see the echo of in our in our official logo today. And we're off and running. Yeah, it's so amazing. I mean, you don't always get those kind of results. In fact, sometimes Larry was known to actually make people cry. And and he denied I I, that. I cannot I can neither confirm nor deny that uh, Larry ever made me cry in a hot seat but session. But the truth is, you know, and if you don't, it might seem like why would somebody put themselves through this? It's because this is how things are created. It, it well, and just to explain on the crying, we teased Larry about that. It, it was it was even a running joke for a while, and the reason that that would happen is people would have such tremendous breakthroughs in a really short period of time that it was just this release where they're just like, Oh my gosh, you know, I mean, we're talking tears of joy and relief, not because yeah. they were distressed, not because they're, you know, they're emotionally getting hurt or distressed. It's because they're having this huge breakthrough and it's just releasing all that motion. And yeah. it's the kind of environment where it was safe to do that too. Right. Yeah. You know, nobody was, was very, thought, you know, it's very encouraging for everyone to, to go as far as they, they will allow themselves to go. Yeah, and sometimes the groups they point out blocks that are like money issues, relationship mm -hmm. issues, mm -hmm. you know. And when you're doing this, it's just uh, so it's something uh, that fascinates me. I understand how it works, and uh, we do it all the time. We we do mastermind all the time. Yes, so, and you've created a great mastermind for for your group now. Yeah. So tell me about your, your thing. How many, how long have you been doing this now and how many adventures have you gone on? Well, let, let me talk post great lockdown, right? Because just like I started with something a completely different business, adventure CEO has, has morphed into a media company over the years. We started out organizing mastermind adventures so we take a small group of high performing business owners and go out it's like hey let's go whitewater rafting you know what i mean we're talking deliverance level like the movie deliverance level of yeah. whitewater rafting <laughs> let's go bungee jumping but you know do it it's like this stuff that you know let's do I, a motorcycle trip through you know spend a week on uh out in the desert in the, in the desert yeah and i in 105 like, degree heat on motorcycles that are you know 140 degrees in temperature it's just yeah. but you know doing stuff that that was fun had some risk to it. So it was serious fun because that, that breaks the, puts you in a different mindset. I and mean, if you come and jump off a bridge with me, our conversation at lunch is going to be very different than the one we would have had if we just uh, said, Hey, let's go down to the corner. Yeah. Well, it's that, I think it's that human experience, you know, you're going through yes. something together. Yes. So. The human experience of going through something together. It's the, the biochemistry and the psychology of doing something that pushes your limits in a way it's it's the the uh, you know the psychological effect of doing something you've always wanted to do or and never got to or don't get to do enough because of the rhythm of running a business it, you know it can become 100 hour weeks never seeing the sunrise coming and going from the office or if you're running yeah. a factory you know you own a factory you're in and out i did that for years and it's like you never see the sun come up and you're not, you know, and you actually get a chance to be with your peers, people that are yes. in the same situation. You know, a lot of people think, oh, you're running a company. You got it made. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're people, not there at three o'clock in the morning when you're lying careful. awake going, how are we going to meet payroll? What are yeah, we going to do about that supplier that just went under and can't deliver? It's yeah, be careful what you ask for because you, <laughs> you always get it, right? <laughs> yes. So, you know, so with Larry, Larry's been taking me down this journey the last three years where I said, you know what, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fine as, as an accountant, but I, I really want to have a scalable business. So yeah. when you're, when you're, a, you know, uh, a CPA like I am, like Debbie Morgan, you really hit a limit on, on how much you can do. Okay. Every, every professional service runs into that, right? We can, only, oh, alone, yeah. as an, as a yeah. relatively independent operator, even if we're bringing people on board, we can only do so much. Right. So Larry's, you know, taking me step by step. Okay. This is how you do it. And, and, you know, it's, 
I can't say, I don't think he ever asked me to do something that I didn't do. And I don't think he's ever asked me to do something that didn't, you know, give me positive results. Yeah. So now, like, as, as you're watching this, if I may, as you're watching this, if you don't know Larry, my first question would be why? And playfully, you know, like, is he someone you should, that you should know, just like Joe is somebody you really need to know, which is good, that, which makes it good that you're here. These are, these are business people that have great experience and are good at sharing that experience in a way that you can apply to what you're doing. And with Larry, you know, he, he served in the military. He was a, he's a green beret. He led, he was an A team leader, like the TV show, except that was real life. So yeah. after, you know, and after he rotated out of the military, he built a very successful business. So he's bringing a lot of experience and training that he's incorporated into his life and business to the conversations that he has with us. Yeah. And he always makes himself available to, you know, yeah. he does things like a monthly book club. I mean, he does just follow following him. You could pick up a lot of stuff. Yes, uh, absolutely. Very, very humble down to earth. Anyway. Yeah. If you get, ever get a chance to, to work with Larry, I highly recommend it uh, or find somebody like Larry. You know, this is not or join or join Joe's master. You still running your mastermind? Uh, the, we're, we're pivot. Post post great lockdown. I know we've we've all made a lot of changes. Post the way I like to refer to all that that happened in 2020 is the great lockdown. Just, there is it. like a, a definite, you know, of life before COVID and then life after. Yeah. Uh, so the the point that I got with Larry, you know, because what I've learned okay is the way you scale a business is is through actually helping teach people how to become mm -hmm. leaders and mm -hmm. empowering other people right there you go yeah yeah and it was like this is nothing like what i like i said be careful what you ask for because now i'm, I'm going into a whole nother skill set i'm learning things i never had to learn before and uh you know, so now we come up to this. Uh, I said, okay, so how do I teach leaders? How, how do I build my team? And and Larry starts saying, you know, uh, team building exercises. Okay, team yeah. building exercise. So I'm thinking, you know, like a baseball team. We'll have batting practice. Uh, we'll we'll you know throw from the mound. Uh, that could be. Uh, well, the but truth you're you're probably, operating in a remote environment, though, aren't you? Where everybody yes. Just... yes. So that's another issue. But the truth is they say, okay, what exactly is uh team building? Like what exactly is it? So Larry, you know, does what we all do. We we Google it. And there was some like really strange, like playing rock, paper, scissors, like strange activities. I'm like, this is something you do on a playground. Yeah, my, so, my favorite is get everybody together and play cards against humanity what's that hone the, hone, it, it's a game where you get to hone your backstabbing and uh political manipulation skills oh uh, okay somehow I, <laughs> it seems like it, it would be counterproductive it would be, like it would be extremely counterproductive yeah, i'm, I'm like just having some fun but a, a lot because a lot of times those recommendations are like that it's like geez i don't know why don't we how what does that i'm with you rock paper scissors it's like yeah that's not going to build the relationships it's fun but how does that build the relationships so that you can really have a team? Right. So, you know, I also did, I do a lot of research. I, I bought books and I'm like, let me talk to somebody that actually I think does it. So what you do isn't really team building, right? But it's activities well, that really create those, those relationships. Yes. And we, and we work with, so like the adventure summits that we produce, are for leaders of companies and that's not a team building act uh, that that's a leadership development activity and a business okay. you know a business development activity the work that we do within companies is very leadership development oriented like with a, a mutual colleague of ours um we did some training for the army and navy on one of their bases on leadership program Okay. And that gets that gets the work in the company is very team building oriented because 
if you don't have a strong high performing team, all of the G whiz technology, all of the cool slick processes are not going to support scaling your business. Because it misses, yeah. it misses, it, you'll play all the notes, but you won't have the symphony going because it's those relationships and that team aspect that really makes the difference. So, so just, uh, you know, follow me here. So there's, so I know you want to identify leaders. You want to train them. You want to empower people, mm -hmm. but that's not the same as team building. Right? right. Right. Okay. So, but it, it, but it plays in the team building because you need to, you need to develop the individuals at the same time you're developing the team. Right. So if you think I, about I, it. I, yeah. So like what Larry, uh, what did he say? You need the, the worker bees, right? You need the managers and you need the leaders. Okay. So I'm looking at, so now I'm like, okay. Uh, yeah. If we were in a physical location, yeah, may, maybe we could have a picnic. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe we could play, you know, ball and, and those could be activities that, you know, uh, strengthen bonds and stuff. Right. But now yeah. my one, one, a, a direct, a department director that I worked with at one company, he instituted a once a month, two hour lunch. And it was offsite. It was requirement. It was mandatory. No excuses. The first 20 minutes were to handle business and the rest was social. No business allowed. And that that had such a massive impact on the team that he had taken over that was having problems working together. Really? That it was amazing. Yes. And that played into something that I learned with, with a remote team at a Fortune 100 company. I, had a, I was on a corporate team, then I built a corporate team. So now I've got this team that's spread across five business units in four states affecting 65,000 people. Wow. And I had to bring, I found that I had to bring them together once a business quarter and, and sit down and break bread at least twice. So we do a two day working meeting and the real purpose for the working meeting. And we got stuff done. It was productive because that was a very expensive meeting. You know, people are flying in, they're up, you know, they're up there on the pay scale. So it was an extremely expensive two days that still gave us a return on that investment because it kept the working relationships and the friendships running. If we didn't do that, then you could see that you could see the team cohesion, the team performance really start to decay once once you get past about 90 days. Right. <clears throat> so well, we the, have the like social uh, aspect is huge. We we I, the way I'm looking at it, uh, we have a real uh, dilemma mm -hmm. because now we're all used to, you know, post COVID. I got a team halfway around the world um, building my business. I got even people in, in the United States. We're all over the place. California, upstate New York. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually had to have my assistant create a map with everybody where they live, you know, from the Philippines. And I'm like, oh, my God, we're spread out all over the place. Joe, so you've gone global. We're global. Really? It's very, and, that is very 2001 Space Odyssey. Yeah. Uh, Dave, where are you going now, Dave? Yeah. And so if the, I think the point is that human contact is is very important. Mm -hmm. and, and we do need to, to do some of the things that, you, you know, uh, planned quarterly meetings. You know, or, I actually... For a work team like that, it would probably be even more frequent. Like if, I've talked to some business leaders that they do, like they'll do a Monday, you know, a Monday check-in and a Friday check-out. Remotely? So kind of all, all hands Monday, all hands on, you know, the whole team comes, checks in remote, right? So it's like oh, a, remote, a, a yeah. remote, it's all remote. So everybody has a, has a brief meeting to kick the week off. It's like, okay, what, what do you need for the week? What, you know, what are your goals? Are you clear on what needs to happen this week? What's your, you know, is your schedule laid out? What do you need that, so that we can make sure, you know, I can clear the path for you. So you got it. And then on, then on Friday, how did we do as their formal, as a formal bookends? Yeah. And then 
then they check in exactly in between like some. But this this is exactly what I learned from Larry too. The check ins, the check outs, the constant communication. But now, you know, what I'd like to do, Jeff, so, you know, now I understand as the as a gr growing as a business owner that that's growing, I got to pay attention to this stuff. So now, you know, I know we're remote. So let, in December, I actually flew to the Philippines. Wow. Just to me, yeah, ju I said, you know what? I got a window of opportunity before tax season. I'm going to fly out there just to meet my team. And you know what happens? It evolves. It takes on a life of its own. I wound, we wound up having an event, uh, but as far, so this was the first time our team was all together. Well, and can I? I want to interject something there too. That's world class stuff right there, right? That's world class best practice because you're grabbing the role as the leader and going to where the people are. And making, you know, it's you're making true. the effort. You're, you're going there in person to spend time with them, to show the interest, to get to know them. Right. When a lot of when a lot of people would either expect, hey, you know, it's my business. Come to me if you want to see me. It or, would be easy to stay right where I was, right? Or so, yeah, right? You know, yeah, or do it electronically. I don't, like, I don't enjoy easy, you know. <laughs> I like we're, we're like cut from the same cloth, I think. Well, you, you don't let it. You don't let it. It's not going to stop you, us you don't require it to be easy for you to know that that's what you got to do and right. you do it. So the re and it wasn't, you know, I actually did it because I said, you know, these women are working their tails off for, for mm -hmm. us. Okay. I've never even met them. It would be nice to like, actually, you know, go up, give them a hug, you know, say, thank you. Uh, and, and, so and how did they react when, when you, so th that's what I want to tell you. So my, my ex-girlfriend came with me, right? And we had a, like a company party after the event. And my girlfriend's looking at them interacting. And she's like, do they have a meeting? Do they know each other? No, Jeff, some of these women were working oh. with us for less than three months at the time. Wow. Okay. They were like long lost sisters. She's like... <laughs> Did they do they know each other? And I'm like, no, this is the first time they met. They were singing songs. They brought their kids. And wow. I said, yeah, it, it was. And I said, this was one of the best things I ever did. But now I could see the, you know, the actual it's like the mastermind. It's like there's a chemistry that happened and the productivity. And Larry told me about this, too. Productivity productivity went through the roof mm -hmm. so i'm like okay we got to keep it. one thing i know is if something's working yeah we keep doing it so i'm we're gonna i'm going again in may and then we're going back again in october so this is going to be a regular part of our business okay to and then when we get together so this is what and we could talk offline because i did mention this to you yes i said maybe you could you know uh tweak your your you know adventure ceo and, and maybe you can make it like a we can do some kind of team uh adventure okay that being said so i got that what are so the title of this was what was it something about team building even if you're remote team yeah creating high performing teams despite remote work so that I want to get your take on that because that's really why, you know, I said, okay, there's the physical team building. And then the, mm -hmm. one of the things I picked up from Larry was we have a daily gratitude meeting. Oh, at nice. 7.55 like AM. Uh, every, everybody in the accounting team, just, all we do is we say what we're grateful for that day. Uh, believe it or not, it's always little things. Oh, my sister brought me lunch. Oh, I, you know, I met my mom for whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can't, I can't tell you, like, it's, if I miss it, because like, uh, if I miss a day, it's almost like, what am I missing today? Oh, yeah. wow. Now see, that's the goal. That's the gold. That's when it's working. 
So that's one thing wow. I think that, and we just do it with the accounting team. And there's no- as, as you're watching this, I'm sorry, Joe. Look, as you're watching this, I hope you're writing this down because yeah, that right that, there is the gold and, and to be able to, to implement it in a way that it works so well that everybody wants to be there because it sets the tone for the day. It, it creates a bond that there's, it, it's not about money, right? You, I mean, you can't under, there's some limits on that, but the real thing that, that bonds people together are these types of things. And they're more necessary in a remote environment than they are face to face. Yeah. And this is one of the little things I picked up from Larry. He mm -hmm. told me about, they have, what do they call it? A stand up meeting every morning. Standing they, meeting. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that. I like setting, but yeah. anyway, well, it's just like, I, I got that from uh, my manufacturing. <laughs> we would start every day. We'd have all the managers that was responsible for a production program. So in one uh, and we'd start the beginning of the day, no chairs in the room. It was an empty, it was a room that was cleared of all tables and chairs. Everybody was there to report. And you had two to five minutes. You had to know exactly what your status was of everything what you were going to do that day. If you needed anything from anybody, you needed to raise that so you could schedule a meeting to get it handled. And if you had a problem, you needed, you needed to get it on the table so that it could either be solved right there in that short time frame, or schedule a meeting to go work it out. And if you didn't, if you showed up not prepared, not a good day, yeah, but I could almost nobody ever showed up unprepared in it because in manufacturing, everything has to be so synchronized, right? And you're putting a car together and all of a sudden it comes, the car comes to the spot where the seats go in and there's no seats or you run out of seats well, you know, or, we did or you a, get every other one in, you know, it doesn't work well on the show, showroom floor when people walk in and every other car is missing a seat. You remember we, the last podcast we did, it was about the, uh, the sequence. And, and I was like, yes. I had you because I said, this is our, you know, we can't finish a tax return if the client's missing something. So you know, I yep. used that and I showed it to, to my team. And, we, you know, again, all these little things, all these little tweaks. But give me, do, do you have some ideas, some suggestions on other, uh, you know, team building, uh, leadership well, training? That specific to remote work, I do have one thing I'd like to share, especially if you have managers you know, you, you own a business and you have managers or a manager that's running remote teams and they're struggling with that. And they want to, you know, because a lot of times managers will want to bring people back in the office. And it's like any manager that's doing that, fire them. They're incompetent. They're not good as a manager. We've been running remote teams since at least the time when Queen Isabella sent ships full of sailors out to raid South America for gold. And that took them a year to check in on when they were supposed to because of the communication lines. Now it's so hard to communicate with someone on the other side of the globe. All they, they have to open an email and go click and instant, instantly you're face to face like this. Yeah. So it, it's a it's a mindset issue in a in a misfocus from a management standpoint. Yes, it's about team building. Every team building tactic won't work if from a from a leadership and a management standpoint we're not focused on the right things. So there, there needs to be lots of communication that helps with the team. Like you're doing, like you're saying the daily gratitude, doing things that are, that are not right on point with just getting the work out. Oh, you know, well, grinding the work out doesn't work any better in a remote team than it does when you got, when you have a building full of people, it just wears them down over time. I, I want to make fun. a point. One of the things with the gratitude meeting, cause they, they, take no longer than 10 minutes we yeah. there's no business questions there's no i just have one question they've tried that i'm like nope get back to me after i've done my my work <laughs> yeah so and how, how great everybody how great has, is that every, a real conversation every day and I, I should take a snapshot because every day everybody's leaves the the meeting with a smile and I'm like, it's, it's, it's a great way to, it's just, and it's so simple, Jeff. It was so, so I want to share something with you. You might get a kick out of this, but you know, the IRS wrote all, wrote their uh, 10 year strategic plan. Okay. You know, the IRS has been getting uh, uh, bad press for a long time. Right. 
So mm -hmm. they come up, we're going to change this. You know, they're hiring 87,000 people. Uh, so, and, and I should have had the, the, it's an actual document. So they give you the five top things that they're going to do to, to ch turn this around. And number one was, oh, we're going to make it easier for people to file. Uh, we're going to give better customer service. Uh, we're going to, you know, upgrade our systems. You know what number five was? They were going to look for great people in, in a nutshell. Of how, I'm like, they got this all backwards. Big failure. Exactly. How Big do failure. you create a great system if you don't have the people? Yeah. Right. Well, and that's, and that's the problem with team building and it, and it's not the, it's not the, the people that are on the team. It's another, it's another management and business leadership problem. If you want, if you want a high performing team, hire great people, which means you need to understand what seats, you know, it's your bus, you're driving it. What seats need to be on the bus? What is the requirement for performance, what did each one each one of those seats need to represent in terms of performance towards your business goals? What does it take for that person's psychology, not their technical skills, but their psychology when they're sitting in that seat so that they can be successful? Then the technical stuff that goes with it, that's just table stakes, right? If someone has an accounting degree to begin working in an accounting firm, that's just table stakes. Do they have the mindset to succeed as an accountant? Right. I'm good with numbers, but accounting, not my gift. Right. Right. I, I struggled with that in business school. And it's just because of um, I'm not great with with that type of detail work. Some other detail work I I can do. So it's like, what what is it that that person needs? Then we need to get the right person in that seat. Then once all the seats are filled, now we can start the team building stuff. And that, right. And then you got to go out and create activities and, and actually make it uh, try to make, make it fun for people. That's what well, we try. Yeah. To I sat across, oh, I was working with a company that had, so the, the context is they had, they're, they're in trouble. They're a technology company. They're flailing in the marketplace. They've got competition that's starting to eat their lunch after they had been, a, had been dominant with their technology for a couple of decades. They've gone from 1100 people to 300 people. They're in the process of laying off another 20% of the workforce. And I'm sitting across the, the desk from the VP of operations to talk about morale because performance is plummeting. People are scared. The top people are finding jobs and bailing because there's like, well, they, nobody knows who's going to be next. Fear is ruling the day. Yeah. The vice president of operations leans back in his chair and looks down his nose and goes, they're not supposed to enjoy it. That's why it's called work. I'm like, whew. yeah, that's the team I want to be on, <laughs> right? And now they were gone in 18 months. Yeah, a storied company that had been a leader in their field for decades, and and it wasn't the only reason. The problem is with that leadership error, that mindset. They had no chance of creating and holding the high performing team they needed just to have a chance to stay viable in the marketplace because they needed to rock and roll. They needed to innovate. They needed to do, and it had, you know, it was like Temple's like, come on, we got to go now, 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 now we're, we're out of time. We're in overtime already. We got to make this happen yesterday to keep the company running, you know, and with a manufacturing company, every job supports, depending on whose numbers you look at another five to seven people. So let's say five to keep the numbers easy. So that's 300 people. That's 1,500 families, 1,500 jobs affected. If there's five people in each family, mom, dad, kid, grandparents, you know, immediate family kind of stuff. I'm, I don't have my calculator. Where are we at on numbers, right? Because we're 1,500. Five is so now, you know, we're talking 6,000 people. I think Larry talk calls this the sphere of influence. Yeah. yeah. Right. The sphere of influence on that is six, you know, over 6,000 people are affected by that guy's mindset of, they're not supposed to work it because you know, they're not supposed to enjoy it because that's why it's called work. And it's like, well, yeah. you can't, you can't compete in, to, in the marketplace, especially today. You cannot compete in the marketplace with a manager running that kind of an attitude. If a manager saying, ah, we need to get these remote people back in where I can watch them, get rid of them. They don't know how to manage. It's not about watching them. 
know, are you paying for time or are you paying for results? Right. The manager is supposed to get the results. You have to understand how the works, what it takes to get the work done. Is the manager asking things like, Hey, how's your, you know, walk me through, walk me through your day. What's happening today. And not from a, tell me what you're going to do today so that I can make sure we're getting every dime out of every minute. You know, it's like, Hey, what, you know, what are you doing today? So I can, let me see how I can help you. I think what you're describing is the opposite of team building. It's like team destruction. Right. And it's funny, yeah. you know, because I always said it, it, it start. I always say it starts at the top and it doesn't matter how big the organization is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it's just a lot of time. And this is one of the things I learned, you know, through, you know, people like you and Craig and Larry, uh, it's, it's your attitude. It's, it's the way you go into, into work, your job, your business, it permeates, right? It, it, it has a ripple effect. And like you just said that, that one guy might've been affecting over 6,000 people, you know? Yeah, but it, versus another guy that I knew that that had six thousand people reporting to him, a VP of operations, in a in an aircraft manufacturing plant. He had been a uh, he was a, a retired Marine Corps officer. He was sent to um, assertiveness school to help him back it up a step or two, because he he was notoriously difficult to work for. Everybody that worked for him would walk across broken glass for him. Oh God! Right, but it, they're going. Look, before we can before we can move you up to this level, we need you to have a different context on on how you do this. And I found that out because I I knew him, I'd worked with him, and I heard about that. And it's like, going, this is the last person that needs assertiveness training, and I got a good education on that. It was like, hey, you know what? Here's why this decision was made. It's not just about how to be assertive; it's how to properly be assertive. And with this gentleman, he's a great leader. In order to step into the role that he that he is going into at that level, we needed him to change how he thought about it. And true to Marine Corps form, he embraced the training that they gave him and ended up just knocking it out of the park, leading over 6,000 people. Wow. And that's, you know, so it is. It's about the mindset of the person that is leading because if the team – has a high fear level. If the team for either because people with, with a non accountability high mindset were hired or because they've watched how, how things play out, how people were treated within the company. And they look at it and go, I ain't, you know, last thing I want to do is accept accountability for anything because man, that's not a good day is never pleasant when the bot, you know, Oh, cr you know, the kind of environment where, Oh crap, the boss showed up. What, who's going to get it now? Yeah. Kind of a thing that which happens remote or face to face doesn't make a difference. Yeah. Know, bad managers will will create that kind of environment. Teamwork, team building doesn't work. There can't be a team in that kind of environment because who's going to be dumb enough to step up and collaborate? Right. If I'm going to collaborate with you. So we know each other real well. We collaborate well because we've got trust with each other. I can say something to you that I'm, you know, maybe a little bit embarrassed to say but it's like i know if i do it you'll give me good feedback you'll guide me in how you know and what some what some next steps are right and doing the work that you do tax work is one of those those things where that that's a touchy subject right your field requires high trust for people oh, to yeah. really be able to 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 sh to be detailed with you to the level you need them to so you can provide the the, the high level service yeah well need. it's i'm glad you brought that up because it's actually actually trust on both ways mm -hmm. you know i need to trust my clients and they need to trust me yeah and, and also now you take and this is why it's it's so hard to scale now i had to extend that to my team members yep right because it's not just me dealing with the clients now my, they got to know like and trust my team members well how mm -hmm. is that going to happen if they don't if my team members despise me and how are they ever going to trust you if you don't trust them? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that was something that just was a mind-blowing revelation for me in the arc of my career. When I was like going, oh, the problem is I don't trust them. So now I can't create the relationship that we need to have in order to do what we need to do. Exactly. I can't delegate to them properly 
because I don't trust them. I can't let them yeah. do what they are so much better than I am at that, because that, I don't trust them. And I'm putting a straight jacket on them so that I, you know, so I can look, you know, so I can look out the office window and see my minions and make sure everybody's heads are down and they're typing. And that's great. You know, they might be typing. I hate the boss, but I don't care. As long as they look busy, <laughs> right. They might be typing up their resume. They may be on a call with a, with a recruiter getting a job somewhere else, but I don't care because it looks busy as it should. This is, yeah. good, right? I have looked out the window and seen all of the heads of my minions down typing and saw that it was good. Now I can go back to enjoying yeah. my reflection in the mirror or whatever now people like that do you know all right mr mr jeffrey we, we've gone all over again it's always a pleasure Great I, I hope this was oh delivering. yeah more, for me more information that that's all that counts as long as i get something out of it it's a success. i know i was making notes on what you were sharing so <laughs> thank you okay well this is always recorded you also get a transcript so uh, so before we leave, how do people get in touch with you? Who do you want to connect with people? I, I want to promote my business and absolutely not let anybody know how to, no, I'm just kidding. Okay. Yeah, they can uh, find us at adventureceo.com. That's easy enough. Adventureceo.com, no spaces. And you know, and CEO stands for chief executive, but really it's about continually expanding opportunities. Yes, pushing the limits, doing stuff that uh, that looks a lot of fun. Looks like a lot of fun. So, all right, Mr. Weiner, adventureceo.com. Mr. Jeffrey Weiner, uh, stay tuned. He will be back again uh, next time I need to learn something important. So that's our story. <laughs> We're sticking with it, Mr. Jeff. Thank you so much, uh, Joe. Okay. It's always a pleasure. Over and out. Thank you, entrepreneur.